Hello, race fans, and welcome to Off Camera TV's coverage of the ASRS Sam Maxwell Customs Truck Series. Uh, tonight, we are at the Gateway Motorsports Park for the running of the Staples CAD Tech 100. That's 80 laps around this uh, mile and a quarter. Uh, we return oval here in Missouri, I believe. So, is as always katie reed how are you doing tonight yeah i'm doing great i uh, actually missed last week's race in this league and so i'm even more excited to be back now get to see these guys race again this series is so competitive and i've missed a little bit of that so i'm ready to get going here awesome well we're looking at qualifying right now just about halfway through um jake douglas right now Sitting on provisional pole with a 33 424. Ty Hester going to be sitting to his outside provisionally right now, as it looks like pretty much all of the dr drivers have taken time. Um, looking through the roster, we see a lot of new faces here for um, the series as well. So um, good to see a lot of fresh faces come out here. Uh, a lot of them familiar to us in other series, but uh, new to the uh, ASRS. So good to see that. Yeah, a lot of new people. And I think this might be the most we've ever seen attempt to qualify. Uh, we have what, 39, almost 40 drivers turn out to race tonight. That's impressive. And like you said, pretty much everyone has put in a time. The only driver that hasn't looks like he's not even going to attempt to do it. And that is the five of Scott Haller is the only one that has not put in some sort of time but i do see something that jumps out to me and it's the 60 the 64 of lee staples practice in first qualifying in 23rd man you talk about uh, bad luck i'm not quite sure what happened on his qualifying effort but he was five tenths slower in qualifying yeah that's that is kind of odd so um hopefully you know he is uh uh, race sponsor here tonight, Staples Cad Tech. So uh, hopefully that LA Sim Sport driver can maneuver his way up towards the front. He's obviously got a fast truck underneath him, just um, unlucky in the qualifying attempt. Yeah, really. And we can see a few drivers with him. We got even uh, actually newcomer Chad Barker uh, practice in eighth and did not put in uh, as best of a qualifying effort as he wanted to attempt on his first try. Looks like he was about two tenths slower in qualifying. Yeah, the dog bear invasion has begun in the ASRS. Uh, we got Chad Barker in here, Nathan Little, Wayne Hutchinson, uh, Marcus Tracy. Um, looking for other names that are familiar to us from the Northwest Truck Series. Uh, that looks to be about it who attempted tonight. Yeah, a few more joined. Uh, I think a big pack of them joined, but only I think three or four are going to attempt tonight's race trying to settle in and see what they can do in this series. And uh, again, if anyone is unfamiliar with them, that is uh, one of the big uh, teams that we see on Thursday nights. Looks like everyone's trying to settle in. We do have three minutes left of qualifying. Seems for the most part, everyone just went out and did their, uh, their few laps. We have the 83 on track right now. That is Marcus Tracy. He's attempted uh, all of his qualifying laps, I believe. He's just out there cruising around. It seems only going about 130, 120 right now. So looks like he's just trying to get some airtime for his sponsor. Yeah, and it's definitely going to be different for those drivers as well because they're used to, you know, packs of 20. We have a full field, full 36 trucks going to take the green flag here tonight in about two and a half minutes. So. Yep. I'm going to uh, go ahead and get you uh, the weather real quick. Uh, how about that, Katie? Yeah, it's looking uh, like a pretty nice night here. It's partly cloudy, so we've got that cloud cover, uh, as well as the air temp and track temp about the same, around 79 degrees. Winds have been out of the northeast anywhere from 10 to 12 miles per hour tonight with a 94% humidity. So it's pretty, uh, pretty hot out there when it comes to that humidity, but luckily... Like we said, that cloud cover and uh, the low temps, at least not going over 80 so far. It's been looking pretty nice. Well, looking at your points right now, Jim Fu's still out in front, been out in front for majority of the year uh, after nine 
of the schedule 28 races you got brad cross at number 30 truck if he's still in it because we do have um a couple of guys changed numbers over the uh, last two weeks since we last saw you here on tuesday night uh sam maxwell in third uh jason stewart fourth and jonathan holstein still in the top five for your points right now uh only two winners out of the whole group in brad cross and jason stewart um last time we saw you back at the end of may at rockingham jared mogard ended up taking home the trophy after a dominating performance at the rockingham motor speedway uh, right now he's qualified 11th yeah doing great doing great out there looks like uh, we have a couple of drivers that have won uh doing pretty decent we've got uh, someone in the 49 that picked up this out front great qualifying effort he practiced up front so that's not so surprising from him but even uh, on the front row ty hester practice in 15th qualified up in second nice run for him we're gonna wrap up qualifying here momentarily um next week we're, we're on a three uh in a row uh tuesday night uh, spell here. Uh, next week we have Iowa on tap, but first we got to get through Gateway, of course. Big thing about this track, it is flat, and both sides, both sides of the track are completely different. Turn one and two is a pretty slow, tight, um, radius corner. Three and four, a little bit wider. You can carry a little bit more speed coming off of turn four. So be looking for the entry of one and the exit of four as your problem points here tonight. Looks like we have a little bit of a discussion between some drivers while we're getting ready to move over to the race session. Time remaining has gone up of uh, qualifying. Looks like everyone's trying to line up. This is, like I said, a full field. And I think this is going to be uh, extremely exciting once we get going here. It's a uh, it's not the biggest of racetracks that these guys race on, so they're going to be uh, tight quarters all night. That definitely going to be a fun one, like you said. Uh, we're going to get your starting grid up here for the Staples Cad Tech 100 here momentarily. For the most part, it looks like everyone was excited to get in, but we've got a few stragglers out at the uh, back of the pack that have not uh, lined up yet. All right, and here's your starting grid. Jake Douglas is going to take home the pole here tonight with a 33 4 2 4. Ty Hester to 36 to his outside in second. Uh, row two, Sam Maxwell and Michael Atkins Jr. Uh, row three will consist of Jonathan Holstein and newcomer Brandon L. Smith in the 23 truck. Look out for him. He's got a fast hot rod underneath him tonight. Alex Geese is 77th, going to start in seventh. Uh, Pete Baskins in the number three is going to be eighth. Tom Janini in ninth. And Alan Young going to round out your top 10. Our last winner, Jared Mogar, going to roll off in 11th. Devin Sarah in 12th. Sean Music, 13th. Travis McQuiston. Yes, in 14th, Mitch Brown, 15th, Jordan Harnish in 16th, Jason Stewart rolling off in the 17th position, 18th went to Tim Knott, Brad Cross, and Kevin Ming is going to round out your top 20. Double deuce of Danny Rogers going to roll off in 21st, 22nd goes to Robbie Baskins, uh, Lee Staples rolling in the 23rd position, Edward Bray, 24th, Chad Barker, 25th, Nathan Little, 26th, John Kennedy in 28th, 29th was Wayne Hutchinson, and Jim Foose going to round out your top 30. 31st, Jay Graves, Chris Titus in 32nd, Marcus Tracy, 33rd, Nick Kaufman, 34th, 35th, Zachary Bosnitz, Stephen Trombley in 36th, and not sure if these two are going to be racing or not, but uh, just in case they are, Brian Crisman is going to be in 37th, and Austin Fouch roll off in 38th. I know two of those drivers are not going to be rolling with us. Yeah, actually, it's three. I just wanted to say this. Uh, they called it right at the end of qualifying session as these guys were lining up to go. Actually, three of them will not be able to make the race tonight. Too many drivers qualified. And that is the final three that ended 878 of Stephen Trombley, the 38 of Brian Grimsman, and the 58 of Austin Fouch will not make it tonight. Scott Haller was guaranteed a spot uh, even without qualifying, so he will be the last truck in the field. Alrighty, well, pace cars got him rolling down the back stretch. What are you expecting tonight, Katie? I'm expecting a little bit of, of chaos early on. I'll be honest. I think uh, I saw a lot of these 
drivers getting uh, getting a little tight in the corner, pushing up and I mean, starting side by side all the way through the field. Something's going to happen. I, I think it's uh, something's going to break here early on. But once they get settled, if they can get settled, I think we'll have a good race. All right. Well, I hope that these boys get settled pretty uh, quickly here. You got pace car going to roll off of the racing surface, taking a really, really evasive maneuver coming off of the racing surface. Jake Douglas has commanded a field in that 49 Duralast truck, and he's down and away. Green flag for the Staples Catsack 100 here at Gateway. Wow, top few lanes got uh, got away there. 36 by Hester and stay to the outside here. Try and get a pass on the 49. Ooh, drive out of the corner, and they hit each other. There goes the 30, uh, 36 all the way against the wall. Oh, and the... Somebody gets turned in the back already. White see a number there. Get That's everybody 20, getting caught up. Yep, 23, Ooh. Brandon Smith, uh, the 45 involved, 46 involved. 94 uh, is riding backwards on the racetrack there. I'm seeing a wow. lot of damaged trucks. Ooh, the 23 of Brandon L. Smith. Look at that truck crab walk. My goodness, that is heavy, heavy damage for him all the way in the back there. Looks like the 12, Sean Music, as you said involved as well Got a lot of guys trying to get suppled back through the field looks like the 36 by hester is speeding through there trying to get back up to the lead but he's not going to be able to hold that second position uh, caution did not come out immediately yeah i don't understand what what happened there i mean 49 trying to come out to turn and 36 w was there um don't know uh, if that was just him pushing up. I think the 49 just pushed up. I, I mentioned it early on, and I, I figured that something like that was bound to happen. Uh, I mean, he was against the wall, and after that, I mean, all hell broke loose. It looks like the three of Pete Baskins uh, and the 23 got into it as they were trying to pass him. The 94, we saw him going backwards on the track. That's not the way you want to start this race. So we've got a couple of guys bringing in the 20. Devin Sarah, 36. The 1. All these drivers back here uh, bringing it in. Yeah, we. There's a lot, a lot of these guys that um, I'm gonna have damage may get caught a couple laps down here, and as we see uh, Zachary Bosnitz uh, stuck at the end of pit road. Yeah, um, I not quite sure what happened there. It almost looked like he just completely missed his box. I think he was expecting to be uh, up at the front, and his box was all the way in the back. Yep. He did make a stop. I'm sorry. He was just uh, very quick. Only took two tires, look like. Yeah, that, that was a, that was a huge wreck. Yeah, that was. Uh, and I don't think it was one big wreck. I think the problem was it was a bunch of small wrecks all scattered around, but all coming from the one main wreck among our leaders. The top two got into it. Well, <laughs> gonna, gonna get back and I guess we're gonna line them back up here uh, in a couple of laps. Should get the uh, one to go, I believe, here at the line. Negative, we're gonna go around at least one more time. Um, big contenders out of the uh, out of the running so far, pretty early. Um, 23, Brandon Smith, his debut. Um, Going to put him multiple laps down after qualifying in the sixth position and getting caught up in uh, the 49 and the 36s incident. Uh, Ty Hester all the way back to the 28th position. I, I believe uh, the 23 is going to be done for tonight. That thing's still crab walking. Yeah, that was... Uh... That was a bad, bad uh, wreck for him. He clearly got the worst of that. And again, wasn't even involved in the initial incident. Sometimes that's just the way it is. Well, I'd say um, music looks like he's got... Um, a lot of his damage fixed still a couple of uh, scrapes on that 12 truck but he looks to be pretty decent right now uh, i believe the one may have gotten a little piece of it he's he's looking pretty 
pretty stout right now. The 46. There's at on the page, Robbie Baskins. I know he was involved in it as well. He's uh, got whatever damage he could get fixed. A lot of uh, left front damage to that nationwide Chevrolet. Yeah, and actually, we have a couple of guys that have already called it a night after only two, three laps of, of green flag racing. Uh, not even, mm -hmm. it was it was on the restart. So half a lap uh, out of turn two. Um, we've already got four drivers that will receive DNFs tonight if they decide not to come back in. And that is the 45 of Zach Holloway, the 64 of Lee Staples, the 94 of Kevin Bingus, and the 23 of Brandon L. Smith. All of those drivers deciding to call it a night already after a wreck among our leaders. Well, that's definitely going to hurt the chances for um, Mingus and Callaway trying to make it into uh, the chase. Uh, they are the closest ones to the cutoff for the chase, but they were uh, back in the 15th and 16th position in the standings. Let's try this again, folks. Uh, pace car is off. Jake Douglas again with command of the field, this time with the 44. Michael Atkins on his outside. Bad start from the 44. 49 gets a good jump. Down the way, green flag. Yeah, you've got three wide all the way at the back. Hopefully they're going to be able to sort out. They do up front. Jake Douglas out already. 44 of Michael Atkins Jr. away as well. 70, 98 side by side for third. Looks like 70 got the run up all. Going to be able to clear him up into turn three. Yeah, back behind him, the 01, Jared Mogard. He, he's still hungry. He wants him a uh, back to back win. He's outside of Tom Janini in that 33 Best Buy Toyota. Uh, it's trying to make that outside work. Battle for fifth. It's the 77, Alex Geese behind him is uh, measuring him up, trying to see if he can get around him here in a, in a second. And Mogard still on the high side going into one. Yeah, it looks like uh, top four trying to keep it pretty clean right now with that 33. Tom Janini not having the race he wants right now as he's fading. He lost the spot to the 77. Now the 24 of Alan Young up top. Ooh, back behind him, the 48 diving onto the inside of the two back there battle between the two of Jordan Harnish and the 48 of Mitch Brown. Hell, yeah, Mitch got that GoPro 48 locked and loaded right now. Started in 15th, already up to the 10th position, looking to take away ninth from the 93 of Travis McQuiston. Yeah, worth mentioning, uh, Mitch Brown already has a win this season. So, Good for him to make his way up as he's trying to run the best he can tonight. Already gained in five positions so far. Ooh, the 01 making a pass up there. That was uh, for the fourth position. Trying to get past the 70 of Jonathan Holstein, able to do it. Looks like our leaders are just trying to get single file for now. All the way back through the field, it looks like they're single file. Let's see if we can find a battle there at 68. All the way back here, that is the 68 of Jay Graves Jr. Side by side with the 36 who hit the apron there. Going sideways, gonna make it three wide for a moment. Zachary Bosman, we've seen him be aggressive throughout this season. The 46, Robbie Baskins going on the inside of the 68. And back here battling for that 27th position. Um, a couple of side by sides through the field in front of him as well. Got um, how much three wide? Three wide with the one. The three and I believe that's the 89 of John Kennedy. Jason, Jason Stewart going to be the benefactor there. The 80 locked him up. Wheel hopped a little bit. That's Nick Kaufman going to lose a ton of time, ton of track position there off of that exchange. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. That was a big checkup from him. And he's got a, a lot more good drivers trying to get to him. I'm watching that 36 sliding around back there. I remind that 36 was the one involved in that first race incident, first lap incident there. Looks like the 91 is going to let him go. So he's oh, we got a big battle. Yeah, 33 of Tom Janini watching him. And the, uh, look at the 93 of, and excuse me, new name, Travis McQuiston. <laughs> I think he said it better guy. than I have. Yeah, still, still got to still gotta get these new names. We do apologize if we mispronounce, but this is the battle for eighth right now on the track. I do try and go to the inside of him. Not going to be able to do it. 33 has to run up top. And I've got to say back here, uh, looking at the uh, 47, Nathan Little inside of the two. 
Jordan Harness falling to the back. Oh, he gets he slams into the back of the 47. Nathan Little. Yeah, it looks like that was actually less of the two and more of the 47 pushing up into the corner. Oh, back behind them. Slicing and dicing the 20 of Devin Sarah trying to get past the 22 of Danny Rogers. We've seen these guys. They've been very competitive throughout this season. Danny, though, not having the best luck trying to make their way through the field right now. But yeah, you're right. That was a heavy hit from the two onto the 47. L, uh, old double deuce, uh, missed the race last week. Uh, that pilot J Chevrolet, um, trying to fight off that 20 and Devin Sarah, but to no avail, they're going to be drag racing down the back stretch. 26 behind him, Chad Barker licking his chops, waiting for one of these two to make a mistake and capitalize. Uh, the two locking him up in front of this battle, though. Harness getting into three pretty hot, gonna slow him down a little bit as they are working back off turn four. Ooh. Yeah, they're trying to get around that two who's slow right now. Two having difficulties trying to get by that 47 of Nathan Little, who's a newcomer in this series. Looks like two not ever the best night gonna lose track position there. So he's going up the track, gotta catch that car. As 22 and 20 go side by side all the way by him. And that's just gonna fall all the way back to 15. Ooh, Jake Douglas. That's Jake Douglas, our leader. What in the world on his roof? Uh, it's all gone wrong. <laughs> what? Wow, Jake Douglas out of turn two. He just, he just tried to catch his truck and went onto the inside and flipped right on over. Well, okay, it's still green. It's still green. No caution. Our new leader, 44 of Michael Atkins Jr. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that is not, uh, that was not uh, obviously uh, not involvement with anyone, but he is still. <laughs> He's still there. He hasn't reset. He's trying to get hit, I think, uh, trying to bring out a caution. That's not going to happen. Uh, he is going to have to reset here if he can. There he goes. He resets. And unfortunately for him, he's going to lose a couple of positions by uh, – not a couple of positions, but a couple of laps by not resetting as quick as he could. i I tell you one thing, though. Keep your eye on this 01. Just took over second from Sam Maxwell in that 98. Jared Mogard is running with a chip on his shoulder. He has got a fast truck, and he is not afraid to show it. Chasing down the leader in the 44, Michael Atkins Jr., uh, winner earlier this season at uh, Dover. Sim Racing Apps, Patriotic Chevrolet. Um, still maintaining his gap to second, but uh, that 01, he, he's, kind of, he's coming. Yeah, I want to be has always been a good driver in this series. Uh, wasn't very, uh, I don't want to say competitive, but just wasn't on the ball early on in this season. But, man, he is, he's lit his fire, and he is on his way. He's got his one win. He's ready for more. He's definitely a hungry driver here. Back in the pack, though, I'm looking at this 48 side by side with a 93. Mitch Brown trying not to lose a position right now. Up off the corner, he will hold it for now. That is sixth place on the track. And maintaining that spot from uh, that 93. Uh, right behind him, though, uh, Janini and Holstein fighting again. The 70, part of that LA Simsport uh, staple who um, uh, has Staples Cat Tech on the hood of that truck. So, uh, race sponsor on that 70. Looks like Janini in that 33 is going to get by him. Uh, while they're still battling in front of Mitch Brown and the 93 are just fighting back and forth. Coming back off of turn four here. Great battle for the sixth position. Yeah, very well done. After that first incident, we've been green this whole time, and that's exactly what we like to see, these kinds of side-by-side -side battles. Oh, it was the 93. Almost washed up into the 48 there. Oh, man, that was extremely close for Mitch Brown. He's going to drive away from that, and uh, at 93's competition will soon be 33 of Tom Janini, who's working his way back up. You see uh, Mitch Brown, a uh, winner at Charlotte, uh, Three, three races ago. Um, he's hungry to try and join Bosnich as the uh, only multiple uh, only multiple winners here in the Sam Maxwell Customs ASRS Truck Series. Um, gonna look back here. A good five car battle for the 10th position. Ooh. Tim Knott's got it right now. Sorry, I've got three wide on the, on the front stretch there. It was the 83, 42, 91, three got involved with them as well. Up in front of them, side by side battle. So many battles going on right here. This little pack driving. This is 66 leading it. 
Edward Bray on the inside of him is the one of Jason Stewart trying to make his way up through the field at 91. Zachary Bosnich behind him trying to get back on the lead lap. Zachary is actually down one lap right now. He's going to earn that position back. Going to make it three wide with two lead lap drivers. They are not going to like that one bit as they dive into the corner. I think, yeah, the 91 going to pull out of that probably for the best. The one decides to get a run through the middle of the corner. 66 going to be able to uh, let him go, but still has to deal with that 91. And Jason Stewart, that number one visit Florida Chevrolet. Uh, winner in Auto Club earlier in the year as well. So he, he's trying to make his way back throughout the pack, um, noticing that we had a good green flag run here. And I could be able to use his uh, hangout in the back strategy as uh, that 91 is causing a bunch of problems for a bunch of people right now, holding up that 66 and it would break. Ooh, that two's in the wall in front of him. Yeah, Jonas Harness uh, is into the wall there. No caution as of yet, still sit there. There we go. He's still riding against the wall. There we go. Finally gets off, but he's got people to deal with. Scott Holler driving past him, but he is so slow right now, but not able to bring out a caution. No, I think he was trying to, trying to be as slow as yeah. he was, but. It looks like it. Ooh, 83 side by side with 36 back here. They're going to settle it. That's 44. Michael Atkins Jr. One second ahead of the 01 of Jared Mogar. The 44 will soon have to deal with traffic here as he is putting down some pretty fast times. Looks like the team brought it into pit lane here. He's got a lot of damage to repair going up through the field. I'm looking at the 89. Haven't finished him this race yet. Uh, John Kennedy doing a great job trying to get to the back of the 46 of Robbie Baskins. Holding the 23rd position right now. I tell you, right right in front of them, though, uh, between that 36 and the 83, uh, Hester and Tracy about uh, wrecked each other there, coming off of four. Um, side by side, that Hitachi Toyota. We got to the inside of the 83, Marcus Tracy, newcomer to the series, right in front of points leader Jim Foosen at 42, Menards Chevrolet, and mentioning him, he does have a special passenger alongside. Uh, he lost his aunt over the weekend. So, um, Thoughts and prayers go out to him and his family as they deal with that. So uh, it's Aunt Brenda on the right-hand side of that 42 machine. Ooh, 47 side-by-side -side with the 20 on the backstretch here. Newcomer Nathan Little meeting with the 20 of Devin Sarah. He's been very good in this league, so that's one way to get right into the competition here. The 22 of Daniel Rogers trying to follow the 20 through the train if he can. Can't quite get there though. Looks like the 20 will get the drive up off the corner. Gonna be able to clear the 47 up on the front stretch. And we have completed 26 laps here tonight. And you know, we haven't mentioned him at all either, but I wanna give a shout out to the 41 of Tim Knott up in front of him. Having a clean night so far. He is sit, you know, sitting in the 11th position. Looks like he's going to have to deal with the 20 of Devin Sarah soon. Yeah, him and that 47, Nathan Little. And, um, the dog bear inspired target. Uh, inspired dog bear Chevrolet. He's loose on the apron there. Great save by him. He's only going to lose one spot there. Battle though up in front of him. 41 side by side with the 20. Devin Sarah not able to get that position right now. He's going to back it up into the corner, drive up off, see if he can go side by side. He's trying to. He couldn't get that forward bite for that 20. Going to fall no, back behind him. Going to have to reset and try this again. They're coming up on the 80 lap down of Nick Kaufman and loose in front of him. Good night, Irene. That was a great save. We've seen a couple of good saves in this series, actually. So very well done by the 80 to hang on there. The 80 is down one lap. He's going to be competing with the 91 of Zachary Bosnich, who is half a track behind. So Zachary's got his work cut out for him to catch him for the lucky dog position. Right now, like I said, that currently belongs to the 80 truck. But still, uh, we're going to have to watch this closely because Michael Atkins Jr. is trying to catch uh, these lap down or well the back uh, end of the field here but someone behind him is catching him and that's the 01 of jared mogart yeah i believe that 01 is smelling blood right now at 44 um, got a little loose uh last lap closed the gap by about a half a second mogart look at him diving into three 
He's getting a great run, closing the gap by a couple truck links every time he's doing that. He is on a mission. He wants to try and lead this race. Oh, yeah. No doubt whatsoever. That 44, though, looking comfortable up front. Really, the only one coming is that 01 of Jared Hogart. Everyone else is kind of fading a little bit. Sam Maxwell in the third position is gaining just a tiny bit, and I think he will start gaining once these drivers go side by side for the lead. Back behind them, 22 and the 41. Danny Rogers looking to take over that 12th position. The 20, Devin Sarah has gotten around the 41 for the 11th spot. Tim Knott trying to fight off a hard charge in 22 with uh, 47 right behind them in 14. He got about a second and a half back to the 26. Chad Barker, Wayne Hutchinson haven't called that 71's number today at all. He's sitting here battling with Jason Stewart in the one visit Florida Chevrolet trying to pass that 71 Toyota here in the next couple of laps. Yeah, back behind them, we had a battle. Uh, it was starting to brew between the 36 and the 91. Uh, Zach Kubasin again down one lap. Looks like he's going to let the 36 go. He's on the lead lap. That 36 is in the 18th position after qualifying on the front row. But uh, he is trying to rebound with a little bit of damage on the back. Let's see if he can do it right now. Has already gained about eight spots after that wreck. We do you have uh, Nick Kaufman giving a lot of room to these uh, uh, lead lap cars, letting a lot of them by here. A good group of them between uh, the 42 and the 12. That's about four positions there fighting for that top 20. One might argue the 80s giving them a little too much room. Oh, and there he goes. Oh, Stay he's in the, the wall. wall. Yep right in the middle of one and two he just had no breaks through that corner slam right into the wall and uh, that's exactly what i'm talking about it looks like he was taking a little too easy and then finally after letting everyone go he's got to get back up to speed and that's exactly what happened back up to speed and didn't stop yeah looks it jared mogard new leader out front um looking at it uh, he Pushing got he got back. it yeah just clean pass a uh, couple lap ago, so here goes that 01 trying to get around some lap traffic here. Jay Graves Jr., 28th on the track, first tr truck, one lap down. Yeah, Zachary Bosnich not able to hang on in that position right now as our leader is starting to lap quite a few trucks right now. His next uh, target will be the 25 of Chris Titus hanging on at the end of the, the pack right now. He's got some tail end damage. Like I said, a lot of these drivers back into the field have a lot of damage from our leaders uh, getting into it early on. And neither of those leaders are in the top 10. They both have suffered, um, not necessarily from that one wreck, but they've definitely kind of eliminated themselves right now. Yeah, Chris Titus was actually our pole sitter. Um last week well the week before last in rockingham so um he's fell off a lot here uh trying to find a good battle to show y'all i mean there's a lot of battling going on here we go 22 41 back at it again with the inside is danny rogers Trying to make sh that Chevrolet stick on the exit of four. They're going to have to drag race again. The 41 is getting such a good drive, carrying the momentum on the high side. Coming out of the turns at the 22, cannot get around him. Now, he was running with the 20 of Devin Sarah, but he's uh, the 20 has almost put two seconds in between himself and this battle back here for that 12th position. Yeah, listening in to some radios, guys, right now. And it uh, looks like we might get some people pitting here soon. We have 44 laps to go as they cross the line. And it looks like uh, Nathan Little the tail end of the field. Yeah. Right 40, in the middle of the field, starting to pit. And 47, 26 down. Those are teammates for Dog Bear Racing. Um, they're going to come down and take service here just shy of halfway through the race. We only have 80 laps scheduled uh, pitting on lap. 36. Oh, so. battle side by side. The three Pete Baskins and the 46 of Robbie Baskins. It almost looked like he was about to take out the three. 
71 of Wayne Hutchinson coming off pit lane. He's got to be side by side with the 89 uh, stuck up top there. The 83 from Marcus Tracy able to get that position from John Kennedy. And it looks like the 12 going to follow him right on through our leaders. And everyone's going to have to start pitting here soon. It looks like uh, 30, 30 laps was the mark for people to start pitting. So we'll keep an eye on that. We do have more than 30 to go, so we'll have to pit again. Yeah, it does look like that would be the case. Ooh, 48 taps to 93. 93 is sideways and four. Can he save it? That's a hell of a save from that 93. Uh, Travis going to lose the spot to him and Janini, but the 93 is still able to keep her going forward. Yeah, that wow. was a beautiful save. You're right. Very well done. Ooh, the 80 slow, 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 slow. It looks like he might be out of fuel. He's going so slow. Nick Kaufman, he's got to be out of fuel. Look at him post. We'll see if this causes a caution right now. It's the 25. Chris Tide is back onto the racetrack after completing his position, his uh, pit stop here. Sorry, I'm watching these battles all around the racetrack here. Yeah, no idea what's happening with the 80, but... um. Yeah, he just announced he was out of fuel. So we'll see if he can make it. He is coasting. It is going to be so close. He's right in front of our leaders trying to pit here. The 83, the three have to go around him. He's blocking. He's blocking the access road, which you have to take to make it to the pits. Yeah, they're um, not sure if we have any. I don't believe we have any live admins uh, throughout these races, but um, that is just a... Um, a bad deal for those 77 one of our leaders 48's coming in the 93's in all of our leaders it looks like now luckily for them he did stick to the inside of that road oh here comes a 20 Devin Sarah I thought he was gonna hit him. oh 80 is out of the way on pit lane he will not bring out a caution today as it looks like the 91 going side by side with 36 <laughs> he let 36 go but not anymore they are competing not for position. And our leader, the 01 of Jared Bogard, bringing it into the pits. And he's he's coming in there hot, too. Um, he might have pulled away from about, about a second on uh, Atkins there. Rolling through the pits. 45 miles per hour on pit lane. That is a slow, slow pace compared to what they're normally used to racing here. The 22, we see him completing his pit stop here. We're going to watch the 01 and the 44 pit stalls a couple apart from each other. And here comes the 98 into pit road. You should see the 24 here as well. Uh, the 33 of Janini is coming in. So um, look the 70, it looks like. Yeah, All look of our leaders pitting. Looks like the lead will go to the 41 of Tim Not. Oh, no. A race for our lead. The one of Jason Stewart passed him just into three. So our leader will be the one of Jason Stewart. Neither of these guys have pitted. And it looks like right behind them, the 20 of Devin Sarah trying to get his lap back. Got a little bit of chatter going on throughout the field. We are yeah. listening onto these radios, and it looks like a couple of our leaders are going to start pitting here uh, as they back into the field. Completing pit stops. Oh, the 89. Sorry, Sean Kennedy almost went up into the 71 of Wayne Hutchinson. That was extremely close. The 42 announcing he's going to pit. 41 pitting as well. And the one, the one of Jason Stewart pitting. Yeah, All of our 89. Leaders, like, it in. Um, it looks like uh, when everything cycles back through, Mogar is going to have to lead by Joe. Oh, actually, I believe the Holstein's coming off. So, yeah, when everything cycles through, finally, Mogar should have the lead up uh, on lap 44 right now. Um, so there's Seward and not. So, yeah, we just cycled around. Uh, Scott Holler still staying out on these old old tires here um not exactly um, yeah but the further he goes thing. i mean he can uh he can push it here he uh he may not have to stop if he pushes it farther enough it's uh whew, this is gonna be close for him actually i don't know if the 80 ran out you know i don't know if maybe that was just a leak from damage that he acquired but um if he ran out, then, you know, something, something's a little fishy there. Ooh, ooh, 80, speaking of, came out of turn four, hit the outside wall. The 25 having some issues as well. Look at the 20, split them. Devin Sarah trying to gain as many positions as he can, man. That 80 is having a tough night. Yeah, he, he sure is. 
Um, kind of reminds me of the two, which uh, the two, Jordan Harness has hung up his helmet for tonight. Um, he's going to pretty much come home in 32nd. Ooh, Scott Haller bringing it in now. Uh, looking at his tracker, he did pit, I believe. He did pit that first time, which means he was able to go a few laps longer than our leaders. Um, they went green on lap six, and he is pitting on lap 45. So very well done by him. Great job to stretch that fuel window. Ooh, the 41 side by side with the 47. As we are done with the green flag pit stops here, everybody's got to settle in for a nice long green flag run, hopefully, as the 47 is going to lose a position to the 41 of Tim Knott and the one Jason Stewart making his way through the field after a nice pit stop by him, battling the 47 for the 13th position. And good showing for all of these newcomers. Uh, well, the majority of the newcomers here tonight, uh, Nathan Little. Uh, well, actually, I believe the 93 of Travis uh, Quiston is the highest out of our newcomers, uh, rolling in the fifth position. Uh, behind him being Nathan Little in 14th right now. And um, they're putting on a pretty good show, uh, earning a lot of respect from these guys as the 47 just about puts it in the wall there. Appreciate it, dude. You know, I'm trying to talk good about you. You don't want to hit the wall. Commentator's curse will... Hey. As you uh, see these guys moving around the track, I do want to mention, after everything has settled uh, back into place, the 01 of Jared Mogard is now four seconds, four seconds ahead of Michael Atkins Jr. after only being a second ahead coming into the pit. So very well done by him. He's battling the three right now. Pete Baskin's trying to put him down a lap. Pete is in the 19th position, which means we now have 18 drivers on the lead lap. I'll tell you a big loser on this exchange of green flag stops. That 98 of Sam Maxwell, he was running in the third position when uh, green flag stops started. He's now in 10th. He yeah, also stayed out. He stayed out about four or five laps more than our current leaders did as well. Yeah, I'm actually very surprised by that. Sam normally uh, has great strategy, able to get amazing finishes in this league as we've been able to witness so far. Just crossed over to 31 laps to go. He has a little bit of time to recover, especially if a caution comes out. But right now, if it continues to go green, he's going to have a hard time getting those positions back. Yeah, I mean, already, I mean, he, he's over half of a track behind our leader. I mean, it's uh, uh, sticking up here, looking at the 46 and 93. I mean, Mogart is just pure T dominating yet again here this week. Um, yeah, it doesn't look crazy. like it when you look at the laps led, but in, in, in the way he's been able to drive up through the field after qualifying 11th, I mean, as soon as he got up to the front, he has just driven away, continued to drive away from people. I mean, nobody's able to be with him. He's, he's already stretched his lead to five seconds now. He's got a battle up in front of him, though, side-by-side -side battle on the tail end of this field. The 26 of Chad Barker and the one of Wayne Hutchinson, teammates in our Thursday night series. They are trying to bring the action to this series as well, but right in front of our leader. Yeah, Mogar is going to make quick work of them if, if he has anything to say about it. Um, on the outside, 71i, analyze racing.com. Uh, Wayne Hutchinson, Chad Barker is going to go a lap down here in the 18th position, the 26. Uh, Lion Tamer Beard Care Car. Um, got a lot of a lot of fancy sponsors on that uh, rig. <laughs> yeah, and up in front of them, the 71 also going to give up that position, uh, that track position to the 01, which means the 71 and 26 will go right back to battling, but instead for an even more important award, and that is for the Lucky Dog Caution Award to come out. Yeah, that is, that is true. Um, we're under 30 laps to go now, uh, working lap 52 of the 80 schedule. Uh, Mogar just out to a five second lead, then five seconds back to Alex Geese from the second position. Mitch Brown, about 11.3 back at the line last time and uh, the 93 still battling with that 48 for fourth. That's pretty much the closest, one of the closest battles on track. Never mind. 20, 33, Tom Janini, Devin Serra, uh, the 20 on a tear since these new tires were put on trying to get past that best buy Toyota of Tom Janini. Yeah, I've been watching them for the past few laps and it looks like the 20 
shoots up into the back bumper of the 33, but just not able to complete a pass right now. He's able to catch him, but not able to get through him into that position. Just can't quite get there for some reason. Ooh, a little shake off the corner. That'll give the 20 a, a chance right here on the back stretch. Can the 33 can you continue to hold that position on the outside? It's going to be tough here. The 20, Devin Sarah, he's been driving up through the field for most of the night, and you see it here. Clean pass on the 33, and that's going to move the 20 all the way up into the seventh position after qualifying in 12. And looking behind him, uh, 70, he just had a little scare from our pole sitter to 49, who's a couple of laps down now, Jake Douglas. Uh, took a wild ride and decided to stay in the turtle position for a couple of laps. Um, Holstein, though, that's number 70, Staples Cans Tech ride uh, in front of this battle behind them for t uh, the 12th position. Tim Knott, Jason Stewart getting loose and into each other. Stewart trying to get around that 41. But uh, Tim Knott, as I've uh, seen tonight, he is one tough cookie to pass. He really is. Tim has been able to hold that position for the majority of the night, not really giving anything up, honestly. Tim qualified in the 18th position, has gained his way up to the 12th position as he gets that spot back from the one. The one's going to have to settle into 13th for now as they're going to continue to battle. I'm sure we're crossing over 23 to go here soon. And uh, it really does look like the the one of the one of Jared Mogard has got this in the bag. I don't want to say that too soon, but I mean he's just putting on a show at this point, already stretching his lead even further. And uh, Michael Atkins Jr., even though can't quite catch him, is having a solid night. Yeah, um, as long as he doesn't get caught up in anything, that 44 tends to have a good night. Um, yeah, he's got a bunch of lap down traffic in front of him right now. Uh, the 46, the 3, and the 80. Um, whew, Nick Kaufman. Um, it's just been one of his nights for that guy. Yeah, it really has been. He's just not having the race he wanted to. He's going to be give, keep giving up track position here. He's got to be able to maintain uh, minimum speed. That's fine. Oh, uh, oh, yeah, the 3. three. Yeah, you saw exactly what I saw. The three up off the corner. <laughs> he went sideways. You can see God. the number on the side of that truck. Yeah, he, he hammered the wall. That Under Armour uh, Chevrolet definitely got some right, right side damage on that thing. She hurt. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Ooh, looks like the one was trying to pass the 41. But the, the 41 kind of just went down for a little bit of a block. I think the one might have gotten a piece of them just a little bit as the, these two drivers are battling. That's allowing the 22 of Danny Rogers out back to catch them. Look at that Danny's run. Just clearing, yeah, a massive run there. Now, if he can just tuck up in front of him here, uh, he's not going to be able to. Looks like Knott's going to fight back on the outside. That 41 with uh, Century 21, Mike Bowman on that hood. Um, I'm going to actually surrender that 12th position over to this dude, 22, Jason Stewart. I'm going to keep, keep it rolling. I have 20 to go next time by for actually, there it is, 20 to go. Jerry Mogard already into turn one. That's how far behind uh, everybody from 11th on back is. Uh, the leader is running a 34-4, and they're about 28 seconds behind. So got about six seconds separating them from going on going looks a lap looks like now. Uh, after listening to some radio uh, we are going to get some pit stops here soon the mid pack uh, starting to pit here uh, the leaders that pitted before are pitting again Wayne Hutchinson, Chad Barker uh, these guys back here starting to pit those guys were the first uh, one lap down 47 in as well oh man the 36 up in front of him he's in the lucky dog position but his truck is just so damaged right now yeah. Good uh, you know, strategy for teammates there. All three of the dog barrenches here tonight are on pit road right now. Yeah, I actually went to listen in over the radio and as soon as, oh, we got someone around the front stretch. That is the 91 Car. of Zachary Bosnich. A caution will come out. There we go. Let's see what these guys can do oh, once no. they get bundled back up. 
Yeah, it looks like uh, Dog Bear's gonna get caught uh, in the in the kennel there. They're gonna go two laps down to our leader. They will be able to get a wave around here, I believe, as long as everybody comes in. But uh, there's they were already a. Already down a lap, so yeah. Uh, yeah, this is gonna be tough here. Looks like we're gonna have to see what happens oh. here once everyone gets caught up. But yeah, well, this was right on the edge of the pit window. Development. Um, I know. I was uh, highlighting Sam Maxwell earlier. He actually ran out of gas on that last oh, wow. um, cycle. So that's why he lost so much time as the leaders are on pit road. And it's just no man's land between the 01 and the 44 into their boxes. As long as that 01 doesn't miss his box, he's looking pretty good. That maxed out motorsport uh, truck is on fire tonight. As these guys bring him to the pits, looks like the 36 of Ty Hester after qualifying on the front row, but being involved in the first lap incident, going to be able to get that lap back, and that will keep him uh, on the lead lap here as he will be the 15th driver on the lead lap uh, after that long, long green flag run. They were able to lap about half the field there. Oh, easily. You know, the 01 clean off of the pit lane, easily gonna be able to keep that first position. Michael Atkins Jr. off second. Uh, third, fourth, and fifth, it looks like are gonna stay the exact same. I think the big winner of that, if I'm correct, was the 20 of Devin Sarah gaining some positions here. And of course, yeah. everyone taking four uh, after that long green flag run, there's just no reason not to. I'm looking back here. It's him not losing a couple positions, unfortunately, after that stop. Well, I've got to say, from lap six, uh, we had 50. Almost 60. About 54. Almost 60 uh, yeah, it was. Uh, ooh, that was a long green flag run. That's exactly what we love about this series. If there were ever a series to give us this kind of racing, it's definitely this one. ASRS does a fantastic job of putting the competitive drive uh, in these races, and it really, really does show. And look at all those people trying to take a wave around here. Oh, yeah, just a few. We've got uh, up at the front, we've got the 71 of Wayne Hutchinson trying to go from two to one lap down. After that, we've got Robbie Baskins, Pete Baskins, Jim Foose, John Kennedy, Sean Music. 66 of Edward Bray, Marcus Tracy. Sorry, Marcus Tracy is not trying to get away around. He just pitted. But all of the drivers I just mentioned are going to be able to get back from the lead lap. If my math is correct, that is 21 drivers going to be on the lead lap here. And that's exactly what we like to see everybody trying to gain those laps back that can be right at the end of this race. Well, the unfortunate thing is, is that most of them, starting with the 46 on back, um, last pitted at least 20 laps ago. Yeah, very good point. Looks like the only one that just pitted was the 71 of Wayne Hutchinson. Um, you are right. I think a lot of these guys are really hoping for a quick caution. They're hoping caution breed caution here. Well, they're only going to get, you know, uh, one, or, one or two um, one or two attempts at that anyway because uh, we're going to restart with 15, 14 to go. So... They're running out of time as they, if they're if they're banking on a quick caution. Oh, uh, looks like we have uh, trouble with our leader though. One of Jared Mogard has vanished off of the racetrack. He has not come back in. I don't know if he's having connection issues, but he is gone right now. He is not on the racetrack. The 44 of Mike Atkins Jr. is telling everyone, you know, be careful here because we cannot see him. Wow, you, it seems like the, you don't want that first position. It no. Luck to them. They're going to leave him the spot there on the track, but um, I believe They're not going to be able gone. to see this restart. He's uh, gone. He's third-footed. Yeah, there we go. He's officially gone. What a time for Michael Atkins Jr. going to be able to be the control car on this restart. Well, pace car is off for what potentially could be the final time tonight. Green flag back out into the air for the Staples Cat Tech 100 here at the Gateway Motorsports Park. Michael Atkins Jr. out to a tremendous lead on that restart. Going to dive it into turn one back behind him. The 93 fight for second. 
going around the outside at 77 Allen Geese, and here comes Devin Sarah in that 20. Going to try and take over third spot, and he will down the backstretch. Yeah, Devin Sarah, this is exactly what he wanted. Some good luck. And uh, that Where's the 44 him. going? Yeah, the 44 bringing it into the pits. What is going on with our leaders? He might have got a black flag. I think he might have gotten the black flag because of the vanished all. Oh, they should have waved that. Oh, that is not what you want to see here. But look who's in the lead, the 93. What a race we've had. What in the world is going on? I'm, I'm starting to think that 93 doesn't want that first position. It's cursed. Yeah, I don't know. Um, he's got it right now. And all he's got to do is try and keep that 20 behind him. Uh, Devin Sarah definitely looking for his uh, first win of uh, his AR ASRS career. So he's got that to worry about as well. We're coming to the line. 12 laps to go huge developments here late yeah Devin Sarah has had the races this season but just cannot get those finishes can tonight be the night that he finally breaks through and wins a race in this season I, I this is incredible I cannot believe what's just happened here but man that 93 is pulling away and that 20 is gonna have to deal with the 77 yeah Ski's coming back alive after uh getting uh, freight train on that restart uh, back into the third position on the back bumper of Devin Sarah coming off a of turn number four. Going to peek to the inside looking to try and get a fender in there. I think he's there. 20 is going to have to get a good run into one. He's got it. Closing the gap to the 93 as well. Backing up now. That yeah, speed coach Chevrolet. Whoa. Yeah, 20 Dode in the corner there did not have the grip to run up off, and that's exactly what happens. You think you gained so much, but you have to give it right back up. That 48. Mitch Brown driving up through the field, trying to get him a second win of this season. Able to pass that 77 up on the bottom. Will he move up to close the door? He absolutely will. Got to move up the, oh, Ooh, 77, 77 in the wall. In the wall. Yeah. I don't think he was expecting that uh, 48 to come up so violently. The 48 actually tail slapped the wall there a little bit, I think. And it surprised the 77. Yeah, 24 in front of him. Do not switch to him, Cafe, because uh, he was glitching all over the place. Alan Young having a good run, but uh, his connection is starting to take a pooper. Uh, quality really down. Uh, that champion, uh, Chevrolet, going to have to get under control. There he goes. He looks like he's hey back now. with us now. Look at the 98. Sam Maxwell having a great recovery. This caution is exactly what he needed. He was up into the top five for the majority of the race. Like you said, ran out of fuel. Ooh, <laughs> a little bit of... Uh, Touching going on back there between the 77 and 30. Bradley Cross trying to make his way up through the field. Oh, I thought he was about to turn that 98. Man, that's 77. He is losing so many positions here. That was just such a bad hit on the wall. Three wide for a moment. Yeah, Holstein and Rogers getting around. Oh, Rogers almost into the 77 there. Uh, that pilot flying J Chevrolet back into the top 10 tonight for the first time tonight. Uh, Jason Stewart right in front of him in ninth now. Visit Florida Chevrolet. But right now it's all coming down to uh, uh, what we're working with up here. Uh, the 20 still trying to get some kind of a run on this 93 truck. Uh, Travis is just gone right now. He's got a good thing going to 20. Wow. Diving it in there. Closing the gap to about a half a truck lead. He's going to have to do that a couple more times to get around that Toyota in front of him. Where in the world did that come from? Man, he just completely just dove into that corner no regard for brakes whatsoever, and he's doing it again. Yeah, he, oh, he's man. he looked a little bit more conservative there, but um, with just about seven to go. <laughs> I gotta be careful. Speak. Don't uh, don't burn your tires off. You've got the 48 of Mitch Brown and the 24 of Alan Young. Those drivers are just as hungry. Trying to get some win here, uh, some wins here on the season. Oh man, this is this is gonna be a good race for the end. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's a good battle brewing for third as well, but we're gonna we're gonna keep up here with this 20, just for right now, because he's looking to the inside of the 93, almost gonna push up into him. I mean, he's got to be careful because uh, there's been a couple of a couple of these kinds of moves happen in the ASRS and. Um, Officials don't exactly like him all, all, all that well, so um, he's going to have to watch what he does here, how he gets around his 93, going to try to have to do it as clean as possible. I mean, a little bit of chrome horn is acceptable, but, you know, you can't just flat out and run over the guy either. Five to go. You're 
right. Uh, five to go here. And it really does look like the 93 is trying his best to just drive out the windshield, drive away from him if you can, because if you see the 20 continue to dive, you're going to drive off of his line, and that's not going to help you at all. No, it is not. About a three truck length gap between first and second right now. The 48 and the 24 slowly closing in. Oh, a little bit of touch right there. He's, uh, He's I'm here. Close. I'm here, He's bud. Close, yeah. We have uh, a newcomer to the series in first, Devin Sarah, who's done everything but win, it seems, in this series. The 48, who's got to win all the season, and the 24, who's just as hungry as anyone. This top four battle is going to be amazing towards the end here, but the 93 looks like he's going to try and drive away after the 20 had a terrible turn, too. Yeah, he did not get through one and two like he wanted to, opening the gap up to about four truck lengths, but he could close it just like that in turn number three. I have a feeling if, if we get green all the way to the end here, um, that is going to be the money turn right there. Got three yeah, to go. This is insane. What is going on here? Oh, man, this battle is crazy. It looks like uh, the 20 just keeps driving back into it, but not quite able to get there. Yeah, he, he's, he's got to try to cool these tires off as best as he can. These, these last uh, couple of laps here, we're going to come to two to go next time by. But um, he, he's looking like he's pretty much tore his equipment up. As of right now, 93 has got about a truck length and a half. Oh, he's loose on the apron. This could be what the 20 needed. Here comes Devin Sarah, two laps to go. Yeah, the 93 gathering it back up. Uh, this is getting ever so close for the 20 of Devin Sarah, who, like I've said, has just tried to win so many times, but has been bitten by a bug at the end of the race. He's not able to get the finish. Oh, yeah, man, the top he's, four he's, evenly spread. He's as close as he's ever been coming into three here. He's going to back off just a little bit extra here. Next lap, don't guarantee it. 93 is going to come off turn four. He sees the white flag in the flagman's hand. 24 in the wall behind him, though. 20 just 20 about into it. the wall a little bit, yeah. Almost a, like a little bit of a, a pancaking on the wall there. Just a little bit diving into the corner. Not going to be able to get off this turn. Not quite there. The 93, he's got to set up turn three perfect because this 20 will dive it in. You know it's going to happen. Well, here we go. Devin Sarah, his last chance, last ditch effort here. Going to dive it in, going to give him a little shove to the 93. Going to push him up the track just a tiny bit. Travis McQuiston going to hold on to it off of turn number four. 20 into the wall behind him. Going to block the 48. 93 is going to win it. Travis Side by McQuiston. side for second. Oh, Winner man, here. what does the 20 have to do? Talk about this first time winner. What a night for the ASR <laughs> series. This was impressive. Wow. Yeah, that and 93. look at Sam Maxwell up to fifth. Very well done by him. All the way through the field. Oh, it looks like Tom Giannini is disconnected. Don't tell me he dropped out right at the end of this race. Oh, we'll have to keep an eye on that. Jason Stewart up in there in the top 10. Brad Cross. Danny Rogers. 70 able to hold on for a good race here but what a night for the 93 truck uh that was just an amazing finish there i'm glad that thing went all the way green travis mcquiston gonna gonna burn him down here on the front stretch here at the gateway motor speedway winner and i believe his first time out because I, I haven't been able to do it, uh, enough research but i believe this is his first time out with the asrs here in the sam maxwell custom truck series he's gonna bring it around and um, just a great win for that 93 for uh, Pelletier and McQuiston Simulations driver out of Tiffin, Ohio. Um, actually going to do do the gentleman's burnout, if you will. <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to. I mean, I think he's just taking advantage of this win. I mean, look what happened. That was such an impressive uh, victory there after all of the bad luck that we've seen a couple of drivers have in the lead tonight. I mean, we had, what, three drivers get taken out. Uh, well, actually, I would even go so far as to say four were taken out. Uh, one by a wreck, second by a spin, third from uh, disconnect internet, and then fourth from a black flag. I mean, this was, wow, this was a crazy night for our leader and the 93 just staying up at the front, able to get it, uh, get that finish. All right, we should have your results here momentarily. We're going to give you a quick rundown.
All right. It looks like they're up. 93. Travis McQuiston, your winner here tonight. Devin Sarah going to come home in P2. Mitch Brown, hard fought third. Uh, Alan Young in fourth. And Sam Maxwell going to round out your top five. Jason Stewart bounces back from the back of the pack to finish in sixth. Seventh goes to Brad Cross. Danny Rogers in eighth. Ninth, Tom Janini in tenth. Jonathan Holstein. Eleventh goes to Tim Knott. Alex Geese. Uh, Bad restart from him on that last one. You know, send him back to 12th, 13th. Or Robbie Baskins, Jim Foos, 14th. Sean Music in 15th, 16th. Pete Baskins, Edward Bray in 17th, 18th. Ty Hester, 19th. John Kennedy and running on your top 20. Last car truck on the lead lap is Michael Atkins Jr. Wayne Hutchinson, first truck, one lap down in 21st. Marcus Tracy, 22nd. Chad Barker, 23rd. Scott Holler, 24th. Jay Graves in 25th. First truck, two laps down. Nathan Little. Uh, Chris Titus. Uh, Jared Mogard in 28th. 29th. Zachary Bosnich in 30th. Goes to Jake Douglas. Nick Kaufman, 31st. Jordan Harnish in 32nd. 33rd. Brandon L. Smith. Kevin Mingus, 34th. Lee Staples, 35th. 36th. And your last truck is Zach Calloway. Yeah, it looks like uh, we are trying to get everyone in for interviews as quick as we can. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in the third place finisher of tonight. That was by just a little bit. It looks like two hundredth across the line. Uh, that was the 48 of Mitch Brown. Hey, Mitch, you got us? Yes, I do, guys. Please, please walk us through that race because that was so eventful to watch you drive up through the field. You qualified in 15th tonight, able to finish uh, in third by just a hair. I know you were trying to get past uh, Devin at the end there, but just walk us through your race. Uh, we just took the race uh, lap by lap. Just just try to be patient as possible. This uh, this is a, a different style of track. Um, you got to kind of downshift going into turn one and two. And, you know, it's all about tire saving here more than – most mile mile and a half tracks but um no just be patient um it was fun uh, to have a green flag pit stop it was really nice to have that uh that last restart was uh was pretty fun and those last uh, five laps were uh, were pretty intense my heart was beating a little bit so uh no good to come home with a top three finished um we're just on a strong strong run lately and uh, i just can't thank everybody back at the shop for uh, putting so, such great trucks together yeah, you could you could say that again. That was a great run by you, and it looked like, for the most part, uh, right at the end there. Did you think you could get up to the ninety three, or or towards the end, were you just trying to settle for for getting up to uh, the back end of Devon? Uh I tried to get to the ninety three. I I saved. I think I saved just a little too much at the end. Maybe if we had a couple more laps, I could have had something for him, but. Uh, you know, props to him for uh, having a good race. Uh, I think he's one of the new guys in the league. And to come out like this and get a win is pretty strong and just show, goes to show you how good of a racer he is. Yeah, it definitely does. Uh, but, um, you know, good, solid, solid day for that 48 team. Uh, you got any shout-outs you uh, want to do before we uh, let you go here, Mitch? Got to thank everybody at uh, Jim Foose Motorsports. Uh, I got to thank all my teammates. Got to thank all the sponsors. Got to thank all you guys at OCTV for putting this on each and every week. Um, and uh, we'll just uh, try to keep our momentum up going to, into Iowa next week. One of my uh, other favorite tracks I like. All right. Awesome. Well, um, hope to see you there and uh, hope to see a good finish out of you, bud. Good job tonight. 10 4. Thank you, guys. Yeah, appreciate it. That was the 48 of Mitch Brown, again, finishing in the third position. And the person that beat him by just a hair, I keep repeating that because it was so close. It was such a good battle towards the end there. Um, after the 93, it was able to get the win. But in second is the 20 of Devin. Sarah, Devin, you here? Yes, sir. All right, Devin. I didn't say yes, sir. I said yes, sir. Like, yes. Uh-huh. Sure, sure. Uh -huh. uh, Devin, uh -huh. walk us through the through the race there for you. It seemed uh, it seemed like you were just about to get that win after finally struggling uh, to get it throughout this season, but unfortunately it was snatched away right at the end. Did you think that you had something for him, or were you just uh, oh, you yeah. kind of running the wheels off of that car the whole time? I think at the finish there, 
Um, obviously, you know, I was right on his back bumper, but I mean, in turn one right there, my chest, I kid you not, was probably going at 130 pace. Like, it was beating out of my heart. I literally gave everything I had to that final lap and it just was short. But um, I think it's a really good finish for me. Uh, I've struggled a lot this year. I've had a lot of bad luck, a lot of finishes where I, I should have finished better than I did. And I think I can, you know, hold my head up high after this race and say, you know, I am, I have proven, you know, that I'm, I'm capable of winning a race. And I was right there. Um, but, you know, I just was so close right there. But um, you know, Travis did a great job protecting it, driving through that, and hats off to him. But, man, we're close. We're right there. Yeah, it showed. It really did. You, uh, I even commented that you have been so close this entire season. Um, before that last restart, I was wondering, contemplating, would tonight be the night? And unfortunately, it wasn't. However, still a great run by you. Did you have anything uh, prepared if we went green? Were you able to – did you have any strategy in play? Were you going to change it up, maybe try to get two tires to, train tra to get uh, track position or anything? Or were you going to do the four and see where you fell? Uh, I don't think there was any real strategy in that uh, restart. I just tried to go as fast as I could. And all year long, taking less than four tires has screwed, screwed me over in a way. Um, you know, Dover, I went for it, and it didn't work out. Um, you know, other races like uh, Auto Club didn't work out. You know, so I think that restart, I just tried to go as fast as I could. And as the race went on, I felt like I got faster. At the beginning of this race, I really didn't feel confident in my driving. And then as the race went on, I just felt better and better. And eventually, I was, especially entering turn three, just almost flat out perfect in that. So I think, um, you know, coming off that, I think I'm very optimistic about where, what I could have done, how well I could have done, how much, if this race would have went longer, how well could I have done. So, you know, there's a lot that plays into that. But um, I'm still very, very happy with the finish I got. And, man... This this season we're getting to the you we're know, you know we're getting to the home stretch. I'm looking forward to that and uh hoping to get that first win. Yeah, man, we're definitely uh definitely pulling for you up here. Um you got any shout outs before uh we go ahead and uh turn you loose to the wolves and, and your TS? Uh, I'm gonna give a shout out to uh Destu twenty two, also known as Jason M. Stewart. That guy's helped me out so much. We recently just finished ninth in the twenty four hours of Le Mans too. So um, Mitch Brown helped out in that. So thanks to those guys. And I got to get out of here really quick because I got finals tomorrow morning. <laughs> <Sucks for you. laughs> and, uh, well, you know, I did this race. So, you know, what are you going to do? Well, yeah, man. All right, man. Well, good finish. Uh, so far, we're, st we're, still, we're still seeing you as Brad's made, man. Maybe one night you come back a Brad. And for on that, you guys have a good night. See you, bud. Yeah, thanks again to the 20 of Devin Sarah trying to get that win. He, I think he'll get it eventually. He's just had such a good season uh, in the way he's run his truck. And like he said, just not able to get the finishes he wants. But tonight, uh, able to finish on the podium. And the guy that beat him out for that top spot was newcomer Travis uh, McQuistion doing a perfect job tonight. I mean, absolutely perfect. Hey, Travis, you got us. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Fantastic. Well, I, I'm going to give the, the mic, so to say, to you because I just want to hear what you have to say because you qualified 14th, drove up through the field, and you are brand new to this series. So, I mean, you were uh, pretty much an unknown and able to get this win. Talk about that race. Yeah, it, it was a lot of fun. Um, uh, I didn't really qualify real well. I was right around my practice time, but I, I don't usually qualify well. I just wanted to be consistent. And uh yeah, I was just running around with uh, with Mitch that whole race. I was learning a thing or two from him, just running there with him and just plugging away as long as I could. And at the end there, it just kind of opened up for me. So I'll definitely take it. Yeah, well, I would hope so. That was a win. Of course you want to take a win. Um, but uh, I think my one question is, like you said, you were running with Mitch probably about third, fourth, fifth throughout the night. Uh, did you have anything prepared if you were going to go, if it was going to continue to go uh, green flag conditions and you were going to have to come back in to do another pit stop? Did you have any strategy there or were you just going to play it out and just see where the dominoes fell? Uh, really, I was just going to try to push it as far as I could. The uh, the I pitted a lap before Mitch and uh, when I did that, though, I mean the same lap as Mitch, but I was about half a lap short 
uh, when I checked there about two laps before the yellow. So as soon as I got by him, I just was instant save mode because I'm hoping the guys up front couldn't uh, make it that far. But uh, the, the, that last pit stop definitely saved us. Yeah, and I have to ask for the last question. What was going through your mind when you came off of turn two and you saw the 44 of Michael Atkins Jr. pull down onto the access road because he had to pit with the black flag and everything that happened with uh, Jared there? I was just wondering where he was going. Uh, I'm just like, uh, okay, because I know I, I've raced against uh, Michael before, and, and he's a tough guy to race against and beat, and I'm like, I just, I'm not as fast as him. They were way ahead of us during the race. So I just was hoping that uh, he was actually going down pit road and he wound up going there. And I have to give Devin a bunch of credit for not running me over. He had an opportunity to push me all the way. He tried, but uh, he didn't try to wreck me. And I really appreciate that. Some good hard racing. I got you. Well, we're going to let you give your shout outs here. Anyone you want to thank? Anyone you want to give a shout out to? Yeah, thanks. Um, I'd like to thank Jim for putting on this uh, this league. It's been a lot of fun. I raced here uh, several years ago, and I've never completed a whole season. I'm just here part-time, just having a good time, and I appreciate him for getting me in. And I want to thank uh, you know the teammates that I, I've had in the past here with uh, Ty Hester, which I'm sure he makes for some entertainment sometimes, and Jordan Hornish, Harnish, sorry, uh, he was a, a great uh, teammate for me when I was with them, and, and then my current teammates at uh, PMS, uh, uh, Norm and, and Calvin. It's been a it's been a good time, and I've learned a lot from them, and I couldn't have done it without them. Yeah, really. Well, again, congratulations on finishing first. Next week we go to Iowa. Are you ready for that? Yeah, uh, I, I like Iowa. I'm looking forward to it, and uh, I definitely will try to be here and. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to repeat, but definitely try. Well, we wish you the best of luck. And again, congratulations on your win here tonight. Thank you. And thank you guys for such a great broadcast. Appreciate it. And we will see you next week. All right. Again, that was the 93 truck newcomer first race of the season for Travis uh, McQuistion doing a great job tonight, making his way up through the field after some, um, I think the word I want to use is weird, some very weird circumstances going on throughout the night, able to take that win there at the end after a great battle, able to stay out in front of the 20 of Devin Sarah and the 48 of Mitch Brown at the end there. Very well done by him. And it was just a crazy night for our leaders up front. And uh, that just makes me even more excited for Iowa. Yeah, it sure does. Um, next week, we're looking at the Sam Maxwell Customs 100 at Iowa. 100 laps at the, uh, uh, I believe it's a 7th, 8th mile of the track. Three quarter of a mile or one, one or the two. You know, any, 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 mode. Um, but great racing out here tonight. Good, long green flag run. Strung out the field pretty good. A lot of, a lot of lap down trucks and um, a lot of good side-by-side -side racing all through the field. Just, just a typical... Uh, ASRS Sam Maxwell Customs Truck Series race. But um, our next broadcast, we're uh, doing the season finale for the Northwest Truck Series uh, Thursday night, midnight Eastern, uh, 9 p.m. Pacific time. So uh, join us for that. We're uh, the Volt Vapes uh, 150 at Homestead. So it's going to be a uh, interesting uh, race as we've had a lot of, a uh, lot of, uh, stuff going on with that that particular series so um definitely tune into that and uh like i said next tuesday tune in here for the next asrs uh, uh broadcast i'm from iowa so for katie reed uh cafe hole on the ones and twos and myself uh we are octv and we're gone thanks for watching